Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. We will get to new deals for Saquon Barkley and Jalen Brown in a moment. But we begin today with the news that 18-year-old Bronny James, LeBron James Jr., a member of the USC basketball team, suffered cardiac arrest yesterday while practicing and is now in stable condition and out of ICU. In a statement, the James family thanked the USC medical and athletic staffs. Wilbon, what are your first thoughts about this? Tony, I guess my first thoughts are as a dad and knowing LeBron James a pretty long time uh, to the point so many years ago when he wasn't yet a dad, but he is now. And I know how, you know, just how it fills his life and not just Bronny, his other children. But you hear this and, you, you know, it happens all too often to people younger than we think, and that's part of the jolt. Four years ago today, I was at the Great Wall of China with my brother and our families touring, and we got a call from Chicago from my mother's doctor that she suffered cardiac arrest, and she passed away, essentially, from that. Four years ago today. So when I heard this news about cardiac arrest, these things become very personal and personalized. And at 93 years old, you know, you expect anything, a lot of things. At Bronny's age, what is he, 17, 18? You, 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 18. You, 18, you, 18. You don't. And so my thoughts are just, I, I hope there is the most complete and full recovery possible. Young people yeah. move on from these things now and live very, very active lives. And I hope all that is possible. And my thoughts are with LeBron and Savannah and their children. Yeah, so my thoughts are probably the same as almost everyone's thoughts in this, which is, how awful he's a kid, he's just 18 yeah. years old. I mean, that's the first thing that you think of. The phrase cardiac arrest is a terrible, jolting phrase, no matter who it happens to. So, like you, I wish for a 100% recovery. I'm not as concerned about the future of basketball as I am concerned about the future of his health in a circumstance like that. And I'm sure that along the way, people our age think maybe of Hank Gathers, basketball player, think maybe of Reggie Lewis. Uh, um, I, I think that they certainly think of DeMar Hamlin because that just happened last year. And you could see that on the field. You would hear that phrase and you could see the effect, the profound effect on teammates. I mean, we're in this situation now, Mike, where we have very little facts and we have a lot of emotion, a lot of feeling. Stories that you read point out people who have had cardiac arrest and gone on to resume their yes, careers absolutely. fully. And so we, we want that in this situation, but our hearts reach out to the entire family Absolutely. and we move on from that now. We now move to Saquon Barkley agreeing to the Giants' offer of a $2 million signing bonus and incentives that could push his salary this year to $11 million, which is $900,000 more than the franchise tag slot of $10.1 million. Barkley has reported to training camp and will play for the Giants this year. Wilbon, what do you think of Barkley taking this deal? Tony, it seems like he had to take it. We've been dealing with this bigger story, this more general, this umbrella story about running backs and what they are trying to do and just discussion with each other and whether that can affect any sort of change. You and I have watched the NFL all our lives at a point where running backs, certain of them, were more important than the quarterback of a team. That's Certainly, right. I lived my That's whole right. life that way. Gail Sayers, Walter Payton. Go ahead. Name the quarterbacks you want. I, most important players. You, I, obviously, your favorite player, one of them, has been Jim Brown. More important, yeah. probably, at times in his career than, than the quarterback of that team. And they won a championship. Sure. I, I Saquon Barkley, it's, I hear $10 million, and I hear about Diggs, who signs a, the cornerback, the terrific cornerback of the Cowboys, who I think also signed today for essentially like, what, 18 or $19 million average. I don't know how much of it is guaranteed. And I'm saying to myself, you mean to tell me he's more important to the success of his team than Saquon Barkley is? I don't believe that. But this is a, we live in a sports time, Tony, where people follow the leader. They do that more than they do anything else. It's all copycat. And running backs have no value to the people in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, I think Saquon Barkley probably made the best deal he could. Do you want him to sit out? If he sits out, he forfeits $10 million. And then he just gets a year older and less valuable. He's not a quarterback. He's not an edge rusher. He's not to interpollinate the sports. He's not Kevin Durant. 
who can wake up one morning and say, I'm going over there. Right. That's not how it works. I think that this is basically a feel-good deal for everybody involved. Saquon Barkley gets a little bit more than he thought he was going to get. He gets the $2 million up front, and he gets 8 to 9% more with the incentive so he can say he won. The Giants can say, we held the line, we gave them a little bit more, but we held the line, so we won. And the NFL, Mike, can say that every single Sunday for 18 straight weeks, there's going to be a home team in New York that's either going to give you Saquon Barkley or Aaron Rodgers, so they can say they won't, because they don't want Saquon Barkley not playing. But as you say, the greater issue is the actuarial table, which says that at a certain point, running backs lose value, yes. no matter how good they wow. are. Like new cars, drive them off the lot. Then what are they worth the moment you turn the Half. corner? I'm stunned Half. by it and a little dismayed, to be honest with you, Tony. I, I am. And now to the Detroit Lions, who are facing high expectations after finishing last season on an eight and two run. As camp opens, head coach Dan Campbell says the hype train is out of control right now. Tony, you with him? Well, let me just say, first of all, how glorious it is that there's any hype at all about the Detroit Lions <laughs> yeah. and how wonderful their, their fans must feel because you know what the Detroit Lions have been doing for the last 50 years. They have been stinking Nothing. the joint Nothing. out for the last 50 years. Yeah. Since the merger, which I believe is 53 years ago, they have one playoff win. One wow. playoff win. Wow. And so now on the basis of 8-2 and two to close and a winning record, people are saying they should win the division. And Dan Campbell's 100% right to get off the hype train. But yeah. again, if you're a Lions fan, you probably feel pretty good. And don't tell me they should win the division. Just tell me they can. Because Aaron Rodgers is not the quarterback at Green Bay anymore. Because Minnesota perennially underachieves. Even if they make the playoffs, they get bounced out. And because your Chicago Bears were 3-14 and 14 last year. So they can win the division for the first time in a long time. I'm not a betting man. But I sort of feel like just taking a flight to Vegas. I don't have to do that anymore, though. And just putting some money down on the Detroit Lions not winning the division. Because that's what they've done my whole life of following that that's division. Right. I'm with Dan Campbell. The hype train is out of control, okay? I'm not going to watch them on hard knocks. I, I'm not. But it's out of control, and good for him. He has said all the right things to me, Tony, about the work they have to put in, about earning it, all the right things. But I, I, don't, I don't see them winning the division. I think the pressure right. there. And you know what? Normally, I sort of root for Detroit secondarily, right? Because they're never a real threat in the, in the NFC Central, not the North, the Central. So, but this year, they're good enough now for me to pay attention to and say, yeah. all right, I can root against them now because they don't really stink. There's promise there. They can win the division. They can go further can. than that. Can. But it okay. doesn't mean they, they were, will, and I'll take the field in that division against the Lions. They were 5-1 and one in the division last year. Yeah. Minnesota was 4-2, and two, Green Bay was 3-3, three and three, and your Bears were 0-6. And, six. and yeah. you don't have to worry, no matter what kind of cable or streaming service you have, about watching them on hard knocks, because the Jets are on oh, hard knocks. okay. We go to the Speaking NBA. Speaking of the hype and the train, news, the Jets we go to and the, the NBA, Lions. Who's more hyped? And the news, let me try and get this sentence out, yeah. that the Celtics have signed Jalen Brown to a five-year, $304 million Supermax contract, the richest deal in NBA history. The Celtics lost to Miami in the conference finals this past season. Brown averaged 22 points in the playoffs with three assists and three turnovers. Well, Bob, does this signing make sense? Yeah, because they had to do it. They just could not be in a position, you know, we deal with this with Shohei every day. Do you trade him? Do you, suppose he decides not to resign with you and you let him walk. You let that great asset a historic asset walk out the door with nothing in return. And that's the quandary that faces, you know, executives for a team. You can't let Jalen Brown walk, even though the Celtics haven't won. I'm not going to say they've been a disappointment, but, but they've come really close to being a disappointment because they got to the finals once. Jalen Brown was central in that situation. He's not even the best player on his own team. Jason Tatum is that. Yes, he's not. They got rid of Marcus Smart, who I think was the heart and soul and maybe even the brains of that team primarily. That's what I think. I'm not high on what the Celtics have done. They had to do it, Tony, but it doesn't ensure anything for the Celtics. I, I, I just can't get past the numbers on this contract. I cannot wrap my head around the numbers. $60 million a year for a guy who, as you say, is not the biggest star on the team. He's not. 
Um, now they've done well with him. He's been on they the have. team for seven years. And he's good. They made the playoffs he's a damn good each player. time. Yeah. He's a fine player, but, and there's always a but, in the conference finals this past year, he had more turnovers than assists. Yeah. And in the conference finals this past year, he shot 16% from three. Look, I think that they should always contend, the Celtics, and I think the Bucs should always contend. I don't think the same way about the Sixers, and I don't think the same way about the Heat. But if you want to step back from this and say, oh, my God, $60 million a year, what are we talking about, We're going to be right? seeing a lot more of those, Tony. And remember, Jason Tatum will be up for similar, if not identical, extension next season. So here's the deal. They we got one year. We Tony, should have been basketball they got, players. Yeah, we should have been. We, didn't We're we both crazy. try to be that until about 15? You had a good <laughs> jump right. shot in New York out here growing up from a certain Hall of Famer. It was Famer. a set shot. Six. I couldn't get off the ground. Tony, yeah, they got I'm, one year. Because tough. you can't pay two guys $600 million. They got one year wow. together to me to Let's win that championship. You're right. All right, coming up, both the Brewers and the Astros won in walk-off fashion last night. Which team is playing in the bigger series? Lionel Messi back on the field for Inter-Miami tonight, but is Kylian Mbappe the more compelling soccer player right now? You actually have the Bears winning that division, yes, don't you? I do. Even though they were 3-14. and Yes, 14. I do. The Bears three and win the NFC Central this year. Time for toss up. Two men enter, one man leaves, finishes the show, ponders the meaning of life, then flips on the second of a three game set between the Rockies and the Nationals. You have What's it. first? Toss up. They both ended in walk offs last night. More intriguing series the Reds Brewers or Rangers Astros? Can I push? You always push. Can I push? I guess I can't. Um, notwithstanding Ellie De La Cruz hitting 800 foot home runs, yeah. I'm going to say. The series is the Astros and, and the Rangers. Yeah. And that's because the Astros are the defending World mm -hmm. Series champions. And I had no idea they would not be leading their division by now. And I certainly had no idea that Texas would be. Texas was, won 68 games last year and lost 94. They finished dead last in that division. division. So I don't know what they're doing in first place at all. I'm going to leave the other series to you because that's no. your home division. Yeah, it um, is. But I, I think it's the Astros are putting on a push of sorts right now. And, Mike, I honestly believe that they are the best of the four teams we're talking about. Tony, it is my division, and I will pay attention to it. I did pay attention to it last night. And Ellie De La Cruz, <laughs> that was amazing. They're back and forth and trolling him, you know, with Cincinnati. And, I, I mean, I mean uh, Milwaukee. But, Tony, the answer to the question is the Astros and Texas Rangers. It is because they're the defending champs. And the Astros are more compelling league-wide and nationally. And baseball, let's face it, yeah. it's hard to be a national sport right now. It's regional. But, yes, in my region, that series between Cincinnati yeah. and Milwaukee has some juice to it. But the Astros, I mean, the Astros are a team you want to tune into every night. They're box office. They are compelling. Let me correct one thing. I said that uh, Texas finished last. They finished they fourth. Finish? They did not finish okay. last in the division. Next. What's next? Toss up more compelling soccer player right now. Lionel Messi or Kylian Mbappe? Get this right. Get this right. right now. All right. I will. So uh, Lionel Messi had that unbelievably spectacular debut for Inter Miami. And he proved to the entire world what a great, great star he is. But he's also playing in MLS. And I think that most people would concede that American soccer is not as good as European Seventh soccer. The leader. answer here is Mbappe. And the reason the answer is Mbappe is not only is he considered to be the best player in the world, but because he was apparently offered a $776 million <laughs> one-year contract that? by a Saudi Arabian team. Now, there are reports that he's not interested in that, to which I say, hold on a second. He, uh, he may not take it, but don't tell me he's not interested in it. Don't tell me if he makes an, an enormous sum from Paris Saint-Germain now of $128 million, million yeah. 
128, I think. Yeah. That if he's getting a $650 million <laughs> raise, don't year. tell me he's not interested. Year. Yeah. Tony, yes, the answer's Mbappe. <laughs> and uh, seriously, now, Messi makes a lot of money. Messi made more than he made more than Mbappe to play for the same team, even though, and he's going to win Ballon d'Or when they announced it October 30th, whatever it is, and they going to be some Halloween surprise. Messi's going to win. He won World Cup. But Mbappe is 24 still. I don't think he's turned 25 yet. He's the more compelling player. He's the great player. By the way, that thing's going to be announced in Paris. How crazy is that going to be when Mbappe's not even there anymore? He's not with Paris Saint-Germain. He's somewhere else. But, Tony, people think that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown get a lot of money at 60 mil, oh, $770 million. Of course he's interested. And if he's not, one quick question before we get out of this segment. When do the Saudis come and say to the NBA, say to Adam Silver, we'd like to own that team in Seattle or that new yeah. team in Vegas? And I don't know what yeah, your owners, would... your people, you American people are willing to put up. A couple hundred, August maybe a billion. 1st. We'll just top right that at the trade six deadline. times. Boom. Six times. Here's money. Huh? Here, we're throwing money. Yeah. Money. Yeah. What does that happen? Catch it. That's it. Let's take one last break. Still to come, could your boy Jim Harbaugh be suspended to start the season? Damn. Where does Candace Parker's injury, oh, foot injury, lead to Las Vegas Aces? I've had a foot injury. I'm, I'm really sympathetic with Candace. 76 Come on now. million Come on. dollars Come on. for one year? One year. What? You could be 26 what? and go to Madrid. Tonight on SportsCenter at 6 Eastern, the latest on Bronny James's condition after suffering cardiac arrest at a USC practice. Plus, the Celtics hand out a record-breaking contract to Jalen Brown. Does this make them a finals front runner? And Saquon Barkley and the Giants reach a deal. What this means for the running back market moving forward. SportsCenter, 6 Eastern on ESPN. Happy time, people. Happy 22nd birthday, Bryce Young. Young was the overall number one pick in the most recent NFL draft. Carolina traded up to get him. Young was the runaway Heisman Trophy winner in 2021 when he had 47 touchdown passes and only seven interceptions. He was not in the Heisman mix this past season, but he had 32 touchdown passes and only five interceptions. Nobody worries about Young's talent. They worry about his size. At the Combine, Young measured at 5, 10, and an eighth and 204 pounds. There are two clearly successful small quarterbacks currently, Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray, but most are considerably bigger. If Frank Reich starts Young, he will be the fourth Alabama quarterback starting in the NFL now, alongside Tua, Mac Jones, and Jalen Hurts. Tony, when the Bears had the number one pick, I, I didn't want to trade and get rid of Justin Fields to go after Bryce. I didn't. But let me just say this. Anybody who doesn't want Bryce representing them, I mean, the intellect, the poise, the kid is obviously a great player. I mean, you have to yeah. feel good if you have him in your locker room and on the field. Not so happy anniversary, Zach Borenstein. On this day six years ago, the outfielder for the minor league Reno Aces miscalculated this fly ball and had the embarrassment of having the ball bounce off his head Oops. and over the wall for a three-run home run. This, of course, conjures up the infamous play from Jose Canseco when a ball bounced off his head and over the wall for a homer. Bornstein spent nearly a decade in the minors with reasonable success, but never got the call to the show. Ugh. His best year was Ugh. 2018, playing for the Mets AAA team in Las Vegas, leading the Pacific Coast League in walks, second in runs scored, third in home runs, fifth in doubles, and seventh in RBI. He was a successful professional baseball player, even though he didn't get the chance in the bigs. And why do the Mets mm -hmm. get to have a, a team in Las Vegas? What are the Mets doing with a, a minor league team in, in the desert? Come on now. Stay in no your lane idea. in Florida. No idea. Happy trails, Patrice Bergeron. The Bruins captain has announced his retirement after spending all 19 of his NHL seasons in Boston. Bergeron had contemplated retirement after last season, but returned on a one-year contract and helped the Bruins to the best regular season in NHL history, only to suffer a demoralizing first-round playoff exit to Florida. 
Bergeron, who turned 38 yesterday, was on the Bruins' 2011 Stanley Cup winner and played for the Cup in 2013. Bergeron was one of the best two-way centers of all time. He won the Selkie Trophy as the NHL's best defensive forward a record six times, including the last two seasons. Also, sadly, Tony, Johnny Lujak passed away 98 years old. 98. He won three titles and a Heisman at Notre Dame and played, get this now, quarterback, cornerback, and special teams for four seasons with my Bears back in the 1940s. Well, in those days, everybody was two-way, yeah, right? he was three-way. Everybody way. played both yeah, ways. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah, great yeah. Point. I, it's one of the one of the greatest players in college football history. We're running on a show. Let's go to the big finish. Let's do it. Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh could be suspended four games as part of a negotiated settlement with the NCAA over false statements to investigators. Is that significant? Ah, significant, Tony. Maybe it's a little bit embarrassing on some level, but the first four opponents, no, it's the preseason. No, Michigan's going to be fine in terms of football against those opponents. Golfer Justin Doden confessed to changing his scorecard in an attempt to make the cut at the Ottawa Open. Is this a lifetime ban, Tony? I don't know about lifetime, but it's one to two years starting immediately. Yeah, starting immediately. I don't think so. Candace Parker had foot oh, surgery. She's no. out indefinitely. Big no. deal. Candace, I know all about foot surgeries. We got to talk. You know how much I love Candace Parker, Tony. No timetable for her return. The Aces are the best team in the league. Her numbers aren't what they were going to be in the prime of her career, but she's important to that team. Mets and Yankees start a two game Subway Series tonight. Significant outside New York? No, they're not playoff teams. Last one, Nikola Jokic skipping the FIBA World Cup. Is that okay with you? Yes, get some rest. He's exhausted. Training camp is in like nine weeks. Come on now. Not okay with me. Wembenyama and him should be playing in the World Cup. We're out of time. We'll try and do better the next time. I'm Tony Corner. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knuckleheads. You can get the podcast on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. Jokic, run your horses, get some rest. Here's Sports. PTI.